Hi everyone, today's video is going to be a chatty makeup tutorial on how to get this look for pale skin. Sometimes us paleys get forgotten in the YouTube world and I just wanted to make a video specifically for us, but of course if you're not pale and you've got more tan skin, of course you can wear this. This eyeshadow look will still look fabulous on you. I just wanted to do this one especially for the pale girls. So if you want to see how I got this look here, then just keep watching. But so first off, I'm going to just pin my hair back because nobody wants hair in face when you're trying to show makeup. Now I look like a five-year-old. Woo! I'm wearing um, a sports bra and like lounge clothes in case you're wondering. I just didn't want to get uncomfy, <laughs> if that even makes sense. I didn't want to take off my comfy clothes for this video, so I knew you wouldn't mind. I knew you wouldn't mind. So I am pretty much at my whitest white at the moment. I don't actually have a foundation pale enough for me at the moment so that'll tell you how pale I am right now but I do have a couple that are around about pale enough but if I look a little bit dark in the face in comparison to like my arms or something today please forgive me I really need to go out and pick up a very very pale foundation so if you have any recommendations of a super duper pale foundation um, or a range of foundations that goes very very pale, just please let me know and then I'll be able to be more accurate in these videos. Okay, I'm going to start off with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This is an oil-free primer that creates a really nice smooth base for your makeup. It does have SPF in so you need to be careful if you're going to be in flash photography because this can create just a little bit of flashback but other than that it is an amazing primer. It's just so smoothing without um, being too silicone-y and I just love it. It is extremely pricey but I think it's totally worth it. Now I'm onto foundation and the foundation I'm going to use today is the Benefit Hello Flawless Oxygen Wow Oil Free Makeup with SPF 25. This is a really nice light foundation um, for everyday use but it does have pretty good coverage so that's great. Like I said it's a little bit yellow for me. Um, but it is the palest foundation I have at the moment, so just forgive me if I'm not completely 100% matched up. I find this foundation applies best with a beauty blender. I don't know why, it just seems to go on nice and smoothly and you can get a nice coverage built up as well. So I'm just blending that all around my face in bouncing motions. I'm obsessed with this beauty blender, I just can't get enough of it. Okay, so my base is on and I'm going to move on to concealer and I'm going to use my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade of Vanilla. I think this should be light enough. Pale people problems, I'm telling you, like, there's so many brands that just don't go fair enough for us. Go fair enough? Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm coming to the very end of this NARS Creamy Concealer. Look, it's like, what? Okay, this is to go in the bin after this, so I'm going to get out as much product as I can. Oh my god. What are you doing to me, Nars? Do you see this? Look. Just covering up some scarring that I have, because my skin just broke out a little bit um, a few days ago, so I'm just going to pat that concealer in with my fingers now. This concealer blends really nicely and it works equally as well under the eyes as it does on blemishes and scarring and stuff. So if you're in the market for a new creamy concealer, it might be one to check out. Wearing black doesn't really help me look less pale, does it? Like this is making me look so pale. Oh gosh. Gotta work that pale Irish skin, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna go in with my Zoeva Lux Face Focus Brush and I'm going to set under my eyes with my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder as pas usual. You must be so bored of me using this product at this stage, but it's just so good. I'm going to set the rest of my face with my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in the shade Light and just a big fluffy Real Techniques brush. Just kind of pat that onto the skin instead of swiping, just so I don't move any product beneath. Now, instead of a full-on bronzer today, I'm going to warm up the edges of my face and kind of semi-contour with the Astralis Flesh, Fresh and Flawless Pressed Powder in the shade Darkest Brown. It says Darkest Brown, but really, like, that's it. So, 
against my skin. It's just a few shades darker. I'm going to link below my last pale makeup tutorial, which went down really well. It's one of my most viewed videos ever. And I explain more about my kind of idea or philosophy behind contouring when you're pale in that video and just give a lot of tips and tricks on how I wear my makeup when I'm pale and stuff. So I'm going to link that below for you to watch as well if you haven't seen it already. So I'm not going to repeat myself too much in this one, but I'm just going to warm up with a darker powder rather than a bronzer. You might just begin to notice on camera that although it's not changing my skin colour drastically, it's going to just warm up my face so that it's not just that real flat white look. So I'm just basically applying it in all of the areas I would normally warm up my skin with bronzer. This powder is going to add the tiniest bit of coverage as well. I really like this powder for touch-ups. It's the one I carry in my handbag when I'm tanned and I need touch-ups. I wish they did more shades in it. It's very similar to that kind of high coverage MAC powder. I can't remember the name of it right now. So as you can see there, I just look a little bit more kind of warmed up and a little bit less one dimensional. I'm going to grab some of that powder on my um, face curve brush by Zoeva and I'm just going to place some directly where I would normally place contour. It's not really going to make much of a difference again, just like with the kind of bronzing we just did, but I feel like it does add some sculpting to the face. You'll probably see it um, on camera what I'm talking about anyway. So we're basically just using this darker powder the same way you would use bronzer if you had a bit more of a tan. It's kind of simple really when you think about it like that. Just use it like a bronzer or a contour powder. I'm going to apply some down the nose as well. You won't see much of it, but it does create more dimension to the face, in my opinion. Now for blusher, I'm not sure what I want to do. I kind of wanted to use this Hourglass blush. It's a nice light one, um, but I also really like this MAC Margin shade, which will add like a glow to my skin as well. It's such a gorgeous color, gorgeous color. <laughs> it's such a gorgeous color. It's just got a nice shimmer to it. And then for a budget option, I also picked out of my collection the Essence Beach Cruisers blush in the shade number one, Summer Break. So that's another one you could use kind of more from the lighter side. It's like an ombre brush. That'd be real pretty. I think I might go with Max Margin today. I just really like this one. I'm going to apply that with my Real Techniques contour brush. I love this brush for blush. So I'm just applying that kind of to the apples and backward. Above where we place that contour. So this blush is really light. So you just build it up to whatever kind of intensity you want and it just adds a glow to the cheeks as well so you could totally skip on highlighting. I just love this, it's such a pretty blush. You can kind of drag that just a tad up to the temples here as well. I just think that colour looks so so pretty. And I have a hair on my face from the brush. I haven't decided if I'm going to highlight or not but um, I'm just going to move on to my eyes and stuff and decide at the end. I'm going to go in with the Eye of Horus Husk Brow Define in the shade Light Ash Blonde. I've been using this in quite a few of my tutorials lately. I'm just going to fill in my eyebrows with this. You just use your regular eyebrow routine here. Everybody has a very different eyebrow routine. My eyebrows are feeling a bit wild today, but sometimes you just have to let them do what they want to do, you know? Can't contain the, the brownness. What am I saying? I'm going to set those now with the L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper in the shade Blonde. I love this stuff. It's so affordable in comparison to some of the more expensive versions of it. And it just does the job better than the expensive versions as well. Love it. Yeah, having a crazy brow day, but what are you going to do? So I thought I would do a look with my Stila in the Light palette. I really like this palette and I haven't used it in a tutorial yet. I don't know how I've managed that. It's like sometimes when you like something so much you just assume that you've talked about it when you haven't. 
So these are the shades here. Um, when I was wearing my skin pale for quite a long period of time, I would always veer towards like these two shades just to bring out my eyes and create a nice warmth to the eye. I think they looked lovely. And then highlighting with Kitten really brings out the eye as well. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to first apply the shade Bear just with my finger all across the lid. It's just a very skin tone colour and it's just going to blank out the eyelid. Then I'm going to take the shade Bliss, which is this shade here. I'm just going to take that on the Sigma Blending E25 brush and pop that above the crease. That's just going to create some definition into that crease and act as like your transition shade as well. You don't need to be too fussy with this. These Stila shadows blend quite nicely. And then if you want to blend the edges just very seamlessly, go back into that bare shade that we started with and just apply that to the edges. When you use a skin tone kind of shade on the edges of your transition shade, it just really helps to get that seamless, 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 seamless blend. Now I'm going to go in with a Zoeva so Lux Brow Light brush, it's like a flat kind of brush. And I'm going to go into that shade Sunset, which is gorgeous, it's just such a nice shade. I'm going to just pack that onto the lid. Same on the other eye. This shadow is so creamy and pigmented and blendable, it's just it takes no work. I'm going to go back in with my Sigma E25 brush and just dust along the edges to make sure it blends into that first shade we used. It really won't take much work. Now I'm going to go in with my MAC Teddy Eye Coal and run that along the lash line. Just kind of messily. This is like a red brown shade and it's just going to complement the shade we just put on the lid. I'm just going to take this Lux Brow Light brush and just on the tip of it run it along that liner to smudge it in. I'm going to go into my um, tight line with this Eye of Horus. Got a smoky eye pencil in the shade black. I would use my brown one, but I can't find it. And I'm only applying that to my upper waterline. This will make your lashes look nice and thick. And it also will set to the tight line so it won't transfer down to the bottom. While that liner is setting, I'm going to apply some of that shade Kitten, which is the most pigmented shiny eyeshadow in all of the land. And um, I'm using that on a Fabouche like angled brush. It's like a really strange brush to be using but it's the only smaller brush I have clean because my brushes are in need of a clean. So I'm just going to apply that to the inner corner. Look how pigmented that is! Very good! Now I'm going to go in with the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara and just apply lashings and lashings of that as per usual. This mascara makes my lashes look insane. Look! There's like so much length on the inner corner, which I don't normally get. I think the reason I changed my mind about this Roller Lash Mascara is because when I started liking it, it had been open for about two weeks. So maybe if you didn't like it the first time around, if it's been open for about two weeks and it's dried up a little bit or something, maybe you like it better then. So now I'm just going to apply the NYX Wonder Pencil to my waterline, just to open up the eye. And then I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of mascara to my bottom lashes with this Eye of Horus mascara. The Roller Lash one doesn't seem to work very well on bottom lashes. Kind of wish I hadn't done that now, but what are you going to do? I've decided I am going to add some highlight. I'm going to just use the Hourglass um, powder in the shade Incandescent Electra. It's just a really nice light shade for pale skin. I 
creates such a gorgeous sheen to the face without any glitter. That highlight will just help liven up the face as well and create even more dimension. Can't decide what to do for my lips. I think I might go with this lipstick. It is the, I don't know what it's called, it's just an Urban Decay lipstick and it's a sheer shade. The shade is Sheer Liar, so I have a little bit of a dig guard with there, so I need to be careful. This is just a super glossy and hydrating colour that's just got a bit of a darker pinky brownie nude shade to it, so it's just really wearable, really nice. And I think that is the finished look. I really hope you enjoyed this makeup look. Don't forget to like and share this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very very soon.